Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Um, as you might know or not, uh, I moved around a little bit, I changed rooms and um, placed all my stuff in my uh, work area um, because the computer here is more powerful and um, yeah, I, uh, I like it. Um, and uh, yeah, today I um, built my first bit of modular kit um, it's uh, basically a breakout box of some sort uh, that works with my sound card and uh, gives me eight uh, DC coupled outputs. And with those, I can talk modular from my DAW uh, using a plugin. I can then uh, send control voltages into my analog synthesizers. So. Basically, I created a bridge uh, between digital and analog and um, can now automate and record uh, movements uh, and, and uh, modulations um, on the hardware, which is amazing. So I prepared some patches here. But first, let me uh, show you the box and how it works. It's that little black thing back there with the weird uh, decal on it. As you can see, it has uh, eight cables currently going out. Uh, and uh, it's uh, unfortunately I don't have them all color coded now, uh, but yeah, I guess I have to buy uh, eight packs of cables uh, or maybe use uh, stickers. I'm not sure yet. Um, so yeah, okay, um, that is the box. And when I move now, um, I, I created a little patch here inside Bitwig and um, just for a short demonstration. You can see the lights go off uh, when I uh, do something here in the door and move the knob. So that's uh, very helpful because then I can also see where a signal is coming out. Um, and yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty nice. Nice touch that they added that. Uh, the module itself, by the way, is from Expert Sleepers. It's the module uh, ES3. They also have a bigger one and one that also goes in the other direction. So you can actually receive control voltages in your uh, DAW. Um, but yeah, this one is the output only version. And uh, since I have a 1616 interface, uh, for me was uh, the next logical evolution basically because it has eight analog outputs. Now I attach this digital cable here and I, now I got eight additional outputs. And let's look in the software. And boom, boom, boom. let's go into the settings. And this is how it looks like. Here's my device. Uh, it's also Behringer FCA 1616. And as you can see here, I got the standard mono outputs, one stereo, which is one and two, and then it goes from three to eight. And then we have these new ones here, which go from nine to 16 and each one represents one output um, of modular cables basically so um, now with that at hand you can then just go into your daw which is your bitwig and add a new device which is the hardware cv out you can also send clock um, which is pretty nice uh, so if you want to have uh, time-based effects or trigger the envelope or whatever um, you can do that too. You can even send audio out. There's no, uh, there's no limitation on that. Um, for example, if you have wanted to have some interesting sound mangling modules, then you can just send in a sample and have fun with that. Anyway, um, so what I want to do here, or what I did, I prepared some patches here. I went into the frequency modulation to control the filter cutoff frequency. I uh, added uh, two cables for the shape CV. That's the, uh, there I can select the waveform. Um, and the other one I haven't set up yet, but that's a, a pulse width. Okay, so let's see how that behaves. Um, let's start a sequence. And um, now when I move the, uh, the, control uh, the knob here, can hear the sweep. And one, the 
only problem with that is actually the resolution of the node. Um, I have yet to find the sweet spot here. It really depends on how the hardware is set up. For example, mod depth is at 50% at the moment. Um, I've set it to the center position so I can go in either direction. So that means that when I go to minus 100, it represents me fully closing the knob. Well, it should, but it closes way earlier than that. And that is think I think it's a scaling issue and within the software. And unfortunately, you cannot uh, change the resolution of this knob or uh, set it to unipolar or something, which is unfortunate. But okay. Um, the next one um, is the shape. And when you look at the hardware here, you can see how the knob movement changes. Okay, um, and the other one also does the same, but for oscillator two. I did that for demonstration purposes, but as you can see, there's also lights are changing. For example, I could uh, change that and uh, now just patch it uh, into the LFO shape, for example. And um, then I have an op here to remote control the LFO shape if I want. Um, of course. With the LFO shape, I currently have it in step mode, not in uh, blend mode. So it's like just five values that you can set. And of course, uh, due to the just one way this knob works, uh, it's very sensitive then and goes really fast around. But yeah, that's, uh, I'm not even mad. <laughs> I mean, it works, which is awesome. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, okay. Uh, what can I do with that now? Um, uh, Bitwig has a nice feature which is called modulators. So um, I now have, have not just the remote control capabilities, I can also change the signal. For example, I can make it random or I can just add an ordinary LFO here, which is currently not triggered. So let me make it free running. And then I can just go on the knob and say what range it should go, and it works. Change the speed. Shape. Division, all kinds of stuff. Um, or as I said, random, it's also one uh, that's it's also has sample and hold for example and say how often it should randomize how smooth the amount the depth have it free running Yeah, so yeah, that's uh, some interesting stuff that you can do here. Um, and now, as you can see, I put it here in the FX chain of the hardware instrument. And what I then did was I mapped them. Uh, in any device in Bitwig, uh, you have this little wrench here, and then you have two types of pages that you can uh, set. One is device pages. These are available for all instances of this device, as it says here. Uh, that means uh, you can map all controls that are in this one particular VST. You cannot map uh, stuff that is outside of this uh, device. So for example, the FX, you cannot map it here. You have to map it in the perform section or the preset pages, so they call it. Yeah, and um, as I said, I map this for to be the LFO control, LFO shape, so I can say LFO shape. And um, now, which is awesome, since I have it now mapped here, I can go to my, um, to my uh, MIDI controller and to go here to the hardware controls. And now I got them all labeled here can use them.
Yeah. Like that. Yeah, and uh, this is just one way. It's such like it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward way of mapping. Um, but I just wanted to show you how far you could integrate one synthesizer with those eight outputs. Uh, there's plenty of other patch points that are interesting. Um, I haven't even gone into uh, the uh, Portsmouth, for example. Uh, so let's uh, set the shape to, uh, to square. And duplicate this hardware CV. Select the remaining output eight here. And um, now I can control the pulse width. Let's hear it. Also very sensitive here on the range, I must say. Um, there is a um, there is an um, extension from Expert Sleepers, which are the uh, which is the company that made this module. It's called Silent Way, and I think it cost about nineteen dollars or something. And I think I would, should really check it out because I am sure uh, they also have um, um, da, da, da. they also have a possibility to. Uh, adjust the range that the knob can go and this would be uh, uh, this would allow me to fine-tune them for each specific control that I'm interfacing for example like I said earlier with the LFO which just has uh, five uh, five settings and I got a range from 200 and um, it, it could be much broader than that but yeah it works so I can modulate pulse width here if I want like that um, yeah and, and that's basically it that's what I wanted to do with this little box and um, I I mean this as I said earlier it's a pretty standard way of uh, of mapping but uh, I, I personally wouldn't fully configure one synthesizer like that I mean okay I could say okay these four are always a map like this and I could save it um, but I think I will use them wherever I see fit uh, just duplicate them and uh, I mean it's control voltage that is modulated I mean I could just take this uh, LFO that is currently uh, controlling the uh, pulse width and uh, put it anywhere else I like uh, for example here in uh, an oscillator <laughs> mix forever Let's see how fast it goes that sounds interesting <laughs> yeah um yeah so uh, basically, I have eight eight modulation uh, patches that I can go and can can put anywhere I like, and uh, yeah, and remote control as well, and record the automation. For example, when I'm uh, when I'm recording for track, I can record the filter sweeps and uh, have uh, and and edit them later on. If I, for example, move a break to a different location, I then I basically don't have to bounce or rec uh, or track uh, my synths. I can just let them run live. Everything happens live. Modulation comes in live, um, and yeah, that's that's how I want it to work. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Maybe you're interested in something like that yourself. I can only say I can highly recommend it, 
there are uh, many more possibilities than what I've shown here. For example, you could use uh, a software, it's called VCV Rec. Um, it is also possible there to then um, have virtual modular gear and uh, also map it to those eight outputs from within those uh, virtual patch points and uh, yeah basically have those affect your synthesizers and not just here the modulation utilities that are inside here uh, so yeah could have a virtual modular kit that is actually controlling uh, real world hardware um, yeah which is awesome They're just uh, many more ways to explore and uh, yeah have fun and i see you in the next one